We start in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household, his companions. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them all. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless every one of us and to forgive us during this beautiful month of Ramadan. We are taught the dua, the dua that was taught by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Aisha radiallahu anha. Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anni. O oh Allah, you are most forgiving. You love to forgive, so forgive me. That is a beautiful dua. If you were to think of the meaning, there is a lot of hope in it. Wherein the Prophet wasallam teaches us to say that, O oh Allah, you love to forgive, so forgive me. And that is one of the qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not just the one who forgives, but the one who loves to forgive. So my brothers and sisters, we start off with a lot of hope and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us that beautiful hope and so that we can continue with that hope as we are living. Brothers and sisters, Surah Al-Ahzab, Surah number 33 of the Quran. You and I know that in Islam, we cannot just do what we want in terms of dress. We have to dress in a specific way. We have to follow rules and regulations. We have a uniform. Although that uniform is very broad and although the, the rules and regulations governing the dress, they are actually quite broad and they are quite easy to fulfill. But there are rules. We cannot just do as we wish because we call ourselves Muslimin. And if we do as we wish, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that you will have to pay for the choice you've made. You know, people today say, I'm free to do whatever I want to do. Technically, you are right. You are free. But the choice you make will come at a price. Remember that. You will have to pay for it either in the dunya or the akhirah or both. So when you make a decision, you might be free to make that decision as a human being. You chose how you want to dress, how you want to talk, what you want to do, what you want to eat. You chose what you want to engage in you chose the prohibitions you want to do and the obligations you want to stay away from fair enough the choice was yours but you are answerable you are responsible you will pay for how you have chosen therefore choose wisely so one of the issues made mention of in this beautiful surah is a piece of advice that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to issue to his family members to the women, to his wives, his daughters, and the believing females. So it is not just a piece of advice, but in fact an instruction. So Allah says, Ya Nabiyu, O Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Qul, say, say to whom? Li azwajika wa banatika wa nisa il mu'mineen. Say to your wives, to your daughters, and to the believing women, that they should cover themselves with an outer garment. They should cover themselves with an outer garment. This is referring to when you're emerging from the home, you throw over yourself an outer garment. It's an instruction, verse number 59 of Surah 33, Surah Al Ahzab, where Allah is saying to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell your wives, tell your daughters, and tell the believing women that they have to throw on themselves this outer julbab. Julbab meaning you have your dress, you are wearing your clothing, as you emerge from the home or you are in the presence of those who are strange, etc. You throw over a cloak or you throw over an outer garment in order to conceal your beauty. Now this is the rule of Islam, subhanallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The reason behind this is so that you can save yourselves from harm, so that you can be recognized as Muslim women, as chaste women, as women who are not out there free for all, so to speak, and women who are serious about their modesty and chastity. Now, this is an Islamic ruling. Like I said before, we are governed by Islam. There may be people around us who are not governed by the same rules and regulations. Let them do as they wish. But we do as we are taught. Like I've said before, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. It's not so easy. It's not so easy at a time when Islamophobia is across the globe. At a time when people are looking at Muslims with the eye of suspicion. It's not so easy to dress as a Muslim woman. 
But for those who do remember, they will save themselves from calamity, disaster in this world and the next. It might seem like it's tough and difficult, but wallahi, the more we are in number, the, the better the message we deliver to say we are peace loving, we are beautiful people, we will reach out, we will help, we will assist, we have good character, we have conduct, we are a nation that is filled with goodness and morality and conduct. We are not bad or evil, but when we hide our identity, who would then know that we are Muslim when we do a good deed? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us acceptance. So this is called the verse of hijab. And it is reported that the women from amongst the Ansar, subhanallah, when this verse came out, they used to cover themselves with a cloak or with an outer garment that would actually be non-attractive in its color in order for them to fulfill this particular verse. Now one might say, what exactly is the ruling? The ruling is quite broad, to be honest with you. It's quite broad. There is no specific color. There is no specific material, but it is something that would cover you. It is something that would ensure that you have come across very modestly, etc. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant our women and men the ability to cover themselves in a respectable way that would be, inshallah, pleasing to our own maker, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thereafter speaks about the tongue. Now, before I move on to the tongue, you notice we're talking about saving ourselves. So the previous verse that I just spoke about, it is to dress appropriately to save ourselves from difficulty in this world as well as the next. If we are to follow what Allah says, we are Muslim. Nobody should be hurt by the recitation of a verse of the Quran if they are Muslim. If you are a Muslim and you are weak and you have not fulfilled it, you should rather say, inshallah, one day I'm going to do this. This is my goal. It's my aim. Rather than getting angry and upset and say, look at these people. They are promoting and preaching that we should cover ourselves. It's not these people. It is Allah and it is his instruction. I've read the verse for you, 59 of Surah Al-Ahzab, which is Surah number 33. And it's beautiful. It is filled with absolute beauty, this particular verse. Now going to the tongue, you and I know that a lot of the problems on earth are connected to this little organ that we have, the tongue. It's small in size, but very, very great in damage. The damage is such that it is sharper than a razor. You know that? If you were to utter a word, you could actually exit the fold of Islam. If you were to utter a word, you could actually terminate your marriage. So make sure that you are responsible. This is why verse number 70 of the same surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us to save ourselves in a very beautiful way. What does he say? Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu Allah wa qulu qawlan sadeeda. O you who believe, be conscious of Allah, be conscious of your maker and only utter that which is upright, utter that which is straight. Sadeed means straight, no lies, no falsehood, no abuse, no vulgar words, nothing that is hurtful, etc. You make sure you say words that are straight. They are truthful, they are beautiful, they depict the fact that you're a Muslim, you are responsible for what you utter. These utterances, they can take you into Jannah or into Jahannam. There is a hadith of Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, control your tongue. So he says, oh messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are we answerable for what we say if we haven't done it? So he says, oh Mu'ad, thakilatka ummuka ya Mu'ad. You know, what a big statement you've uttered, oh Mu'ad. What do you think, oh Mu'ad? It's an Arabic saying, when they say thakilatka ummuk, it, it is depicting the seriousness of the statement. Oh Mu'adh, what is it? What do you think? And on the day, will the people be dragged on the fire for any other reason besides that the way they use their tongues? Which means those people who will enter Jahannam, a lot of them would be because of their tongues. Because of how they abused. We talk about people, we backbite, we slander, we deceive, we lie. <laughs> what else do we do? We say the worst words to our children, our parents, our spouses, our family members, our brothers, our sisters across the globe, Muslim, non-Muslim, the type of words we say, we are responsible. My brothers and sisters, this is a verse. Have you realized something? When, there's a, when there is an officiation of a nikah, a lot of the times the imam reads what is known as khutbah tul haja. It is a khutbah. And in that khutbah, small recitation of some verses, this is one of the verses. O oh, you who believe, be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and utter that which is upright. I would like to think that 
in all circumstances, especially in marriage, your marriage can be made or broken depending on how you use your tongue, subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the good use of our tongues. Now, what is some of the benefits or what are some of the benefits of the good use of the tongue? Allah says, as a result of good words and the remembrance of Allah and so many other beautiful usages of the tongue, he says, يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ Two gifts that he will give you. He will make pure for you your deeds. So you did your deeds, now Allah will accept them from you because you have used your tongue correctly. You did not give your deeds away to someone else because you abused, because you wronged someone. And like we spoke about it a few days ago, your deeds end up going to someone else. But because you said good things, يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ He makes your deeds good for you. وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ And he forgives your sins because you've become conscious of your statements. If you are conscious of your statements, Allah says, I forgive your sins. Subhanallah, how beautiful is this? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us through and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who are grateful for the beautiful gift of the tongue. May we be from among those who say the best words. May we be from among those who are conscious, who remember Allah and who make people happy when we open our mouths. Sometimes people are just waiting for others to open their mouths in order to be distressed completely. They know that only venom is spat from the mouths of some, but not us. As believers, that's not what should be the case. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. We move on to another surah named after Sheba, Saba, a place or a town in Yemen. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has spoken about it in his statements and the entire surah is named after it. Do you know why? The reason is they were a people who were blessed by Allah in so many ways. They were given gardens, they were given fruit, they were given greenery, they were given rivers, they were given everything and they were told a simple instruction. Be grateful to Allah regarding this beautiful town that he has given you. He is indeed a forgiving Lord. So they were told, we have granted you all these gardens, plush gardens to your left and to your right. Beautiful. And you have been blessed in so many ways. Be thankful and show gratitude to Allah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this is in verse number 16 of the surah, which is surah number 34, surah Sabah. They turned away. One word. Just one word is used by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the word? فَأَعْرَضُوا أَعْرَضُوا meaning when Allah told them to be grateful, they were not grateful. They turned away. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَرْسَلْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ سَيْلَ الْعَرِمْ وَبَدَّلْنَاهُ بِجَنَّتَيْهِمْ جَنَّتَيْنِ ذَوَاتَيْ أُكُلٍ خَمْطٍ وَأَثْلٍ وَشَيْءٍ مِّنْ سِدْرٍ قَلِيلٍ How Allah replaced the good that they had into bad and evil. You have a garden, everything is plush, beautiful, the fruit is there, everything is there. A single tornado or hurricane can destroy absolutely everything. You and I know that. May Allah protect us from it. Allah says, be thankful, show gratitude, obey Allah's instruction, stay away from prohibition, seek his forgiveness. They just turned away. They enjoyed the gifts of Allah without showing gratitude. Allah says, as a result, we replaced those two gardens with that which was a punishment for them. And we replaced whatever goodness they had with that which was really bad and evil. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ذَٰلِكَ جَزَيْنَاهُمْ بِمَا كَفَرُوا وَهَلْ نُجَازِي إِلَّا الْكَفُورِ That is how we have recompensed them because of their ingratitude. Kufr actually means ingratitude as well. When it is spoken about in combination with shukr, so shukr on one hand means gratitude and kufr on the other hand means ingratitude. in shakartum la azidan nakum. If you're going to show gratitude, we will grant you increase. Wala in kafartum in na'adabi la shadid. If you're going to show ingratitude, then our punishment is severe. So here Allah says, that is how we have recompensed those who are ungrateful. And is it not only those who are ungrateful whom we recompense in a similar way? 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness and may Allah make us from those who save ourselves from the gifts he has bestowed upon us being taken away by showing gratitude. If you show gratitude, he won't take it away. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and ease. I move on to the next surah, Surah Fatir. If you notice, I'm just picking up one or two points from the surah because we want to see how best we can save ourselves, inshallah, from the calamities and disasters in this world as well as the next. We can improve as human beings. We can earn the pleasure of Allah. We can lead a happy, beautiful, comfortable life in this world. The few years that we are here, may Allah grant us goodness, good health, barakah in all our affairs and may Allah protect us from shaitan and his handiwork and his traps. Ameen. In Surah Fatir, which is Surah number 35 of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, you know, my promise to you is true. What is the promise of Allah? The promise of Allah is those who do good and worship him alone, they will get goodness. Those who transgress, they have only themselves to blame when they get their punishment. The life after death is the truth. Don't let this worldly life deceive you. So Allah says in verse number five, Ya ayyuhannasu, O people, this is the address not just to the believers, O people. Inna wa'dallahi haqqa, indeed the promise of Allah is the truth. Fala taghurrannakumu alhayatu dunya, wa la yaghurrannakum billahi alghurur. So don't let this worldly life deceive you and don't let the big deceiver, the devil, deceive you. Life is short. Think a lot about those who have left this world. It will remind you that you too need to leave. If people say, I don't want to think of death because it makes me depressed, it means they are leading a life that is not the way it should be. Because if you are leading the life the way it should be, you know that you're going to die and you are definitely going to go to a better place. You know that. But when you are leading a life that is filled with the desires and lusts and whims and fancies that are in transgression of the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you ought to worry. Allah says you are deceived. You are deceived. There were people more energetic than you. They stayed away from haram. There were people who had more wealth than you. They stayed away from haram. There were people who were in authority in a greater way than you. They stayed away from haram. They have earned the goodness of this world and the next. They have died in a good condition. The people remember them for their goodness. So don't be deceived. The Prophet ﷺ says, increase the remembrance of that which destroys your haram desires. What is it? Death. Think of it. I'm going to die. I could die today. I could die tomorrow. When I die, may Allah have mercy on me. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, true success is when you have died and Allah is pleased with you. No matter what age you have died, you could die at 10, at 20, at 50, at 100. That is besides the point. The point is, was Allah pleased with you when you died? If so, don't worry about what you've left behind. Everybody leaves things behind. Someone will take care of them. I always tell the people who say, no, I don't want to die right now. You know, my wife and my, my children. And I say, brother, maybe if you die, they might be leading a happier life. Who knows? <laughs> no? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us such that if we were to die, at least they would remember us for goodness. At least they would remember us for something decent. Subhanallah. So no matter what age you die at, life will carry on. Your children, look at those who were orphaned. Your wife, look at those who were widowed. Subhanallah. Things will happen. Your husband, etc. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and ease. Like I said, the idea, you got to please Allah. That's what it is. Whether you die today or tomorrow, I promise you is besides the point. You just need to have Allah with you. Once you have Allah with you, you have saved yourself. Trust me, you have saved yourself from the big disaster and calamity of the hereafter. Today we are here, our parents, our family members, our friends, we can take care of one another. Wallahi, trust me, the minute your eyes are closed and you go into that grave of yours, you are all alone. You and the mercy of Allah. What else is there? Your deeds, we ask Allah to accept our deeds. We do little deeds and we want the mercy of Allah. Ya Allah, this month of Ramadan, have mercy on us, Ya Allah. Forgive our sins and grant us a good death, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant us goodness in the grave as well and grant us the best of the hereafter. Ameen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in verse number six warns us openly. 
إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌّ فَاتَّخِذُوهُ عَدُوًّا إنما يدعو حزبه ليكونوا من أصحاب السعير. Indeed, the devil is your enemy. Iblis is your enemy. So consider him an enemy. Look out for him. Watch out. He's an enemy. He has promised he's going to deviate you. So look out. Imagine if someone said, look, there's a thief on the prowl around here. What will you do? You lock your gates. You make sure you tell your children. You tell the whole family, watch out for this car. This is the number plate. I saw it on the group. And you know what? There are people who are prowling. They're kidnapping. They're doing this. They're doing that. You will be very, very careful and alert because you know you don't want any harm. Allah is telling you the same about shaitan. Watch out. He's on the loose. Subhanallah, we are lucky in, in Ramadan, he's actually tied up. But the problem and the difficulty is he works so hard pre-Ramadan that the effect of what he wants lasts sometimes through the month. You see it. People swear and shout in the month of Ramadan, impatient. And then they ask, Sheikh, but aren't the devils tied up? So I always say the devils are tied up, but now you the devil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Sometimes it's ourselves. We become shayateen on our own because we've become accustomed to that type of a life where we become arrogant. So the shayateen are gone. Who is left? Well, me and you are left. Someone around here is a devil. Astaghfirullah. May that not be the case. With a believer, we should soften the heart. Soften. As soon as you want to, you know, say something and you know it's wrong and hurtful, calm yourself down. That extinguishing of your anger and temper will actually earn you Jannatul Firdaus. I promise you. So remember, it's a great act of worship to extinguish your anger. Very big act of worship. So Allah says, Shaitan is your enemy. Consider him your enemy. Be on the lookout for him so that you can save yourself from his trap. Look out, how did shaitan come to me today? He's encouraging me to do this, but it's Ramadan. And even out of Ramadan, I'm not supposed to be doing it. He's trying to trap me to think bad of my brother, my sister. He's trying to trap me to justify the evil that I've perpetrated, etc. Let me never be entrapped by the devil so that we can save ourselves, my beloved brothers and sisters. And this is why Allah says, shaitan calls his people to the punishment of hellfire. And he knows that he's doing that, but it's a trap. You know, when you have an enemy, he wants to see your downfall. He will give you advice whereby you will destroy relations with your own brothers and he will be happy. Yeah, I, look what I did. I broke the family. He will give you advice so that your business can go down. Imagine you go to your rival and you say, hey, look, I got a crisis. My business, you know, my, I'm not making a profit on this. He'll say, no, come, come, come. I'll give you advice. You are asking the devil for advice. He is your competition. He'll tell you to do things such that within one month you suffer a bigger loss. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never let that happen to us. And this is why we are so in need of Allah. And Allah is so independent of us that he makes it clear to us in verse number 15 of Surah Fatir. Ya nasu antumul fuqara'u ila Allah. Wallahu huwal ghaniyul hamid. These verses show the power of Allah. Allah says, verse number 15 of Surah 35, O people, indeed you are the ones who are fuqara ilallah. You are in desperate need of Allah. And Allah is totally independent from you. He does not need you at all. The next verse says, In yasha, if he wants, he can delete you and replace you with someone else. And that is not difficult at all for Allah. If Allah wants to delete us now, we would need to press a delete button to delete something on our phones or systems. Without pressing a button before the button can be pressed, Allah can delete everything. Gone. He can replace you and me with someone else. He says it. Ya'ti bi khalqin jadid. For Allah, it's simple to replace you with someone else. And He has done it in the past. And He continues to do it. It's the way of Allah. All He is showing us in this verse is we are desperately in need of Allah. We need to turn to Allah. Wallahi, I tell you, my brothers and sisters, we will never lose anything by developing a relationship with Allah. Praise Him. Say words.
that are declaring his praise subhanallah alhamdulillah while you're walking while you are driving right now while you are sitting say subhanallah alhamdulillah allahu akbar why not develop your relation with allah praise him oh allah i love you you have given me so much oh allah make me strong oh allah i'm weak talk to him make a make a relationship with allah it can never be wrong and it will never ever result in anything bad it can only be good for you the loser is he who distances himself from his own maker the one who made you you have no option but to return to him you have no option but to return to him. So you have to make friends with him. Subhanallah. Worship him and him alone. Talk to him. Praise him. Say words to him. And you will find a beautiful relationship with Allah. Where you are going wrong, you will find that because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's connection with you is quite strong, you will be distanced from haram. It will take you a very, very long while to even think of committing haram. May Allah forgive us all. May Allah strengthen our bond with him. My brothers and sisters, it's an important point. Read the Quran, recite the Quran every day, few verses. You will open your doors with Allah. That's his word. That is the best word in existence. The word of Allah, the Quran. Read a few words a day. Why can't we do that? We are Muslimin. I'm sure we can do that. No matter who you are, don't say, no, I'm weak. Read one verse a day, one, just one. Pick up a Quran, keep it, go and get a new one today. Keep it and read one verse a day. I promise you your life will change. I swear to you your life will change. We are looking for positive change in our lives. Wallahi, the change is in front of us. Allah showed us how to change. Why then don't we start? Start somewhere. Start with one centimeter. I promise you, you will get somewhere. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. I move on to Surah Yasin. A beautiful surah, a lot of us know it off by heart. We heard it being recited tonight, mashallah, tabarakallah. And many of us would actually have known a lot of these verses. I want to make mention of only one point, although the surah has so much in it. It is a point whereby we need to save ourselves. Look at your hand, everyone. Just look at your hand. Look at your hand for a moment. What do you see? You see your fingers and you know the marks. This hand has been with you for so many years, subhanallah. If you had the opportunity to look at your feet, look at them, subhanallah. You know what Allah says about these organs? Subhanallah. Verse number 65 of Surah Yasin, which is Surah number 36 of the Quran. Al-yawma nakhtimu ala afwahihim wa tukallimuna aydihim wa tashhadu arjuluhum bima kanu yaksibun. On the day of judgment, we will seal their mouths. We don't need their mouths to speak. But their hands will bear witness against them and their feet will bear witness against them regarding what they used to earn. My brothers and sisters, we have to save ourselves from this by ensuring that we seek the forgiveness of Allah. That hand that you love so much, if it were to have a little injury in it, perhaps you would not sleep your entire body. Your entire body would be restless. That same hand will speak against you. Oh Allah. This person forced me to catch this, to steal this, to touch this, to do this. The feet will bear witness. This person forced me to walk in this direction, to do that, to go here, to go there. Brothers and sisters, wouldn't you like your hand to bear witness, to say, Oh Allah, this man put me down on the ground in prostration with his head for you so many times a day, Ya Allah. Wouldn't we like that? Well, we can do it. Seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at our legs. Instead of the legs saying, Oh Allah, this man forced me to walk towards haram. The legs can say, Oh Allah, this man has walked with me to your house five times a day. Subhanallah. This man has stood in prayer until I was swollen, Ya Allah. What witness would that be? Imagine. So when I say, look at your hand, the reason I say it is, the same hand will be talking, it will be speaking, it will bear witness, and the people will say, according to another verse of the Quran, When the skin bears witness against those who perpetrated evil, then they will say, Oh, our skin, why are you bearing witness against me myself? And the skin will say, Allah has given us the ability to speak today. He gave the ability to everyone and everything to speak. So we have to bear witness. 
Imagine your skin bearing witness against you. Today, if you have a little rash, you will rush to the dermatologist, subhanallah, because you want that skin to become normal and to look beautiful again. You have a pimple and acne. You will go on to medication for a while, but you don't realize the same skin will bear witness against you one day if you were perpetrating evil and committing sin. So we need to save ourselves, my brothers and sisters. That is a beautiful verse of Surah Yasin. When you think of Surah Yasin, think of how Allah says, your hands will bear witness against you, your legs will bear witness against you. And when you read that verse, you need to seek Allah's forgiveness. Oh Allah, forgive us. We know that you have said, when we seek forgiveness, you will forgive all our sins, no matter what we've done. Therefore, oh Allah, forgive us and have mercy upon us. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma bihamdik. نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت